Good evening, everybody. This is our uh, 47th regular session. I want to welcome everybody and call this meeting to order. Our invocation tonight will be led by Reverend uh, Stan Steele. Uh, he is the pastor at St. Mark's uh, over on the west end of town. He's also the chair of our ethics commission, and we thank him for his service. So I'm going to invite him to please lead us in the invocation. If you don't mind standing, and then after his invocation, we'll do the Pledge to Allegiance, uh, Pledge to the Flag. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate this opportunity and just want to say that I appreciate uh, the leadership all of you provide. Uh, a guy named Martin Luther used to, uh, to say we're all called to our individual roles and the princes uh, are the ones who are entrusted to care for the people and their concerns. So I thank you for that. It's a challenging time to be elected official, I know. So thank you for what you do. Let us pray. Our most gracious God on this evening, I come to ask your blessings on those gathered here, that the concerns and the matters that are to be discussed tonight by these officials, chosen by the citizens of Hagerstown and by you, may be done with wisdom and compassion, may be done with the interest of the whole city at heart. I give thanks for those who serve in these capacities and all who serve this city in various ways for their care for the citizens here and for each other. I pray for our city that we face many challenges and concerns, that you give us all a spirit of cooperation and understanding to work together to find solutions that will empower this place and will ensure a, a life that is full of hope and full of contentment for the people that live here. I pray all this, O oh Lord, in the name that you have given us, your name, and in the name of our Savior, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Reverend Steele, for that moving invocation. Uh, our announcements, uh, we are operating under the Rules of Procedure adopted September 24th, 2013. The use of cell phones during meetings is restricted. All correspondence for distribution to elected officials should be provided to the city clerk, and sh it should include a copy for the city clerk for inclusion in the official record. Our meeting schedule, we have no meetings for the next two weeks. Uh, that'd be July 29th and August 5th. Uh, August 5th is National Night Out, so we invite everybody to Fairgrounds Park to uh, participate in those festivities. On Tuesday, August 12th, uh, we'll have a work session at 4 p.m. Tuesday, August 19th, a work session at 4 p.m. And our regular session is at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, August 26th. I would like to announce also I'm making an official visit to our sister city in Vesel, Germany. And I'd like to thank all of the partners in the community who've donated some gifts uh, that we can send over. I'm very fortunate that my dad is paying for my trip and not the citizens of Hagerstown. And uh, I'm excited to visit the folks there and get to know uh, the Burgermeister uh, that's been there for 10 years. And uh, apparently they have 50 council people. So I'm fascinated by how she runs things there. Uh, so I am excited about that, and I can't wait to share those stories uh, when I return. Uh, we do have some appointments to announce as well. Uh, we are reappointing uh, Reverend Steele to the City Ethics Commission for a term to expire on September 1, 2019, and uh, George Hill will be uh, reappointed as well to the Hagerstown Housing Authority term to expire August 31, 2019. And we need a motion to accept and uh, confirm those appointments. So move, Mr. Mayor. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion by Mr. Munson and a second by Mr. Mensner. All those in favor of approving these appointments, please say aye. aye. I just say oh, I'm sorry, we do, discussion. Mayor, I, I have no problems with the motion. I just suspect that we do not need a motion for George Hill. I may be wrong. That's that is correct. your the, appointment, and I right. just want to make clear. That is good, while the good council, clarification for the, the record. council is approving something, it is your executive power to make that appointment. For that particular right. appointment, it is the mayor's sole appointment. And I think authority. we all agree with it, so the council would heartily approve it. But I, well, I appreciate those comments. Clear. Is there any other discussion on the motion? 
All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. Mr. Steele, Reverend Steele is appointed to the City Ethics Commission. Mr. Hill to the Housing Authority. Uh, I don't believe we have any guests tonight, but we do have some folks signed up for citizen comments, I believe. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Thank you. I'd like to remind everybody that citizen comments are limited to five minutes per individual. Meetings are televised and recorded. Your comments will be on air and on tape and on YouTube. The first uh, person to sign up is Keely Neubauer. And if Keely, you want to come up and uh, for everybody, please state your name and address for the record when, when you come up to speak. Thank you. Hi, my name is Keely Neubauer and I live at 942 Mulberry Avenue. Could you pull your microphone a little closer, please? Thank sure. you. Thanks. I spoke last month regarding um, an ongoing issue that's been going on for about four years now regarding property maintenance codes and reporting them. Um, I had a hard time uh, preparing tonight um, because I'm fairly upset about something. But to summarize, um, we've been reporting code violations to properties adjacent to us for four years. It doesn't change. They get told to clean up, they do the bare minimum, and then they move on. And it's a mess again. Every time we ask the city to follow up, we're told it's our responsibility to constantly report them. As a result, we get harassed, annoyed, um, they talk about everything from their family and their situation and everything except property maintenance. Our lots are very small. It takes very little to weed and mow and pick up after yourself. It really takes very little. So we've been told that this is a civil issue. The city can't do anything about it unless we constantly report them and that we need to go to court. In December, I made a request for documentations so that we could fight the battle that the city doesn't want to fight, basically, in court. In that letter, I was told that all of the documents pertaining to the issue that has been going on since 2011 amounted to 26 pages. The offenders then sent documentations to our attorney with a, with a email chain of addition, additional correspondence between the city. So we did not receive our documents from the city. In that were comments about what they needed to do to meet code and to come into compliance. This end of June, six months later, I again duplicated that identical request from December, exact verbiage, and requested it again, stating we did not receive everything and we need these documents. I was then told that there are 700 pages, or 700 emails and over 100 pages of documents. So miraculously, in six months, we went from 26 pages to 800 pages of information. And that I was responsible for paying $200 in order to get this information because it was such a cumbersome amount of of documents that it was going to be time consuming. I do not understand how citizens who want to live in a decent neighborhood and who want to not drive up their driveway every day and look at filth and squalor are constantly undermined and not supported. It's bad enough that we have to fight the fight in court. <coughs> It's bad enough that we had to get peace orders in place. But to then go and ask for the documents that we're being told is a civil issue and therefore we need to go into court and then be charged $200 when the person who's offending and breaking the code for years on end has never paid, I don't think they've ever paid a fine. So they've never paid one fine. We have to keep reporting them we keep getting attacked, and now I have to pay 
So I have a check for $200 here, and I will pay the city $200 to get every single page of documents that I can get to go fight this battle because I simply, the one and only goal, I don't want to drive up my driveway and look at filth and squalor. So here's the check, by the way. Thank you. I, you know, I'm assuming you're talking about a Public Information Act request when you're talking about emails and documentation, and of course, you know, those do, there is a, a specific fee associated with that. So I, I apologize that you have felt the need to, uh, you know, go through the, the rigors of a court battle to solve what seems to be a neighbor dispute about how one maintains one's property. Um, well, and that's unfortunate because I do think mediation is a good, a good avenue to, to, it's free, first of all. We offer it for free in this community, and uh, it is important. But I appreciate your feedback. I would invite people when they have these kinds of problems, because I know to come in front of the public like this is not necessarily the most comfortable avenue, and perhaps you think we're more apt to do something about it if you come and talk about it in public, but I want to guarantee you, you can always call up the mayor's office to make me aware of these kinds of issues if you're having these troubles uh, to avoid you know, having to come before the public uh, to talk about such a personal issue. Um, I just wanted to put that out there, but I appreciate the feedback. Next up is uh, Dr. Eric Smith. Self-disclosure, this is my dentist. He takes good care of my teeth. Hold on, that's the timer. I'm going to reset it. Thank you. <clears throat> Your name and address for the record, please, sir. It's Dr. Eric Smith. My office is at 638 Potomac Avenue, Hagerstown. Uh, tonight, I want, I, I've given you all some information that I'm going to quickly go over. You have it. But I want to, for the folks in the audience, I want to talk about um, ongoing loitering, uh, ongoing trash, human waste, defecation, urination, theft, property destruction, assault, gunfire, drug dealing, graffiti, noise, traffic, congestion, congregation and loitering, and a parade of unsavory characters in our neighborhood. Now, I, I blame this on the sheet store that's right down the street, and I think there are, other here, there are others here tonight who will agree with this situation. This sheet store is just, it draws all kinds of trouble. It, all it does is a magnet for trouble. Uh, and what we would like to do is we would like to see the city legally shut down sheets. Now, how will they do that? Well. The, the police department sheets incidents uh, in the last 12 months shows that they've had 82 calls for police service. Uh, and 82 calls is a little bit over the number of eight calls that you all have said that your, your, your new ordinance will, will start fining people. Now, I don't know whether that ordinance is retroactive to the past or whether it's ongoing in the future. Apparently, there was trouble there last night. Uh, but I, I believe, and the other citizens in the area believe this all emanates from sheets, and I think those 82, uh, 82 incidences probably could be multiplied at least fourfold of unreported incidents in the neighborhood. It's constant, and it's no good. Uh, therefore, we, we, we would like to, 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 to have the city inspect sheets and see if they can shut them down or start finding them for these 82 incidences. In the, in the event that you can't, uh, we, would like to, we would like to see if, if we can get the police to go around and collect these eight, eight incidences and start finding sheets. In the event that you can't shut them down, we would like to suggest that maybe uh, sheets hours be limited for, from, seven, say, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. for safety, and they should have security guards 12 hours per day during those hours as they do at other stores. Uh, the trash, the, 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 the sheets should be required to hire trash collectors to comb the neighborhood 12 hours a day. It's sheets as trash. It's got their name all over it, and it's just constant and pervasive all over. Uh, Additionally, I, I, I've read the original site plan for the sheets and the renewed site plan, uh, the chain site plan from the 80s, <laughs> and my interpretation of it is the Planning Commission aired in their approval of the, the site plan and they did not hold a public meeting and adhere to the original recommendations for the first site plan. Uh, why would you recommend placing uh, one pump 
no left turn on to Potomac Street and in one in the original plan and then turn it all around and place 30,000 gallons of high octane fuel 15 yards from the office in the apartment right next to it. Uh, if I were living there, I don't think I would, I would feel very safe about that. And I think the, the original site plan needs to be reviewed or the last site plan needs to be reviewed for changes. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to request additional testimony for the facilities rental facilities ordinance. I think this is a huge undertaking and three inspectors won't solve the problem. I think the city of Hagerstown has terrible problems. I think it's quickly become a ghetto. And I think if we don't, if you all don't do something about it now, and I think you all are responsible, the buck lies here, the past city councils have done the same thing. They've been in, they're guilty of inaction. Uh, I'm not blaming you all. Certainly you're just new to the, to the, to this council, but the, the city of Hagerstown needs to get, get their act together. And I think you need more testimony than just hiring three, three, uh, what was it? Three, uh, inspectors for the job. Um, I see that you're having uh, next month you're having a you're ha placing the order on the table today for the three inspectors and you're having a final vote on it the next month's meeting and I would ask you to actually hold today's a the final vote oh it is today is on the inspectors and we're hiring three additional inspectors in addition to the three we have right well I think that's a fine that, that's a fine thing to do but I think you've got more problems than just hiring inspectors you've got to you got to think outside of the box here and start doing things that that will that will complete our city and and make it whole again and the the, the very first thing is there's I, I gave you a an editorial page that I wrote which I won't read verbatim but the very first thing is there are too many rental units in Hagerstown, and, and you keep encouraging people to buy properties. They turn them into rental units. They become Section 8 units. There, there's, there are people, I've heard of stories of people, 20 people living in a two-bedroom apartment. You know, I, this, is, this stuff is, is, I've got people living in, in, in the alleys in, in, on, off of Potomac Avenue. They're living in the alleys, in garages. And I think you need to do more than just hire three inspectors. I think you need to look at the whole, the whole uh, urban planning situation. I think you need to limit the, you, you need to place a freeze on apartment units in the Hager, city of Hagerstown. Uh, for instance, I, I see- Dr. Smith, I, I do want to say you're, you have exceeded your five minutes. And okay. in, in fairness to the other folks here, I just want to make sure that we honor That's that fine. time Thank limit. You. Thank but I do much. appreciate your, again, appreciate your feedback. I'm a neighbor. I, that's why you're my dentist. You're a block away from my house. Uh, <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about when you are talking about what's happening in that neighborhood. And uh, I don't want you to think it's falling on deaf ears. I know our chief of police is well aware of it and uh, is working with Sheets. Uh, I don't know. I, we don't have the power to just shut a business down uh, for any well, reason. But you do offer some some suggestions that I do think are worthy of consideration. Can I say this? And if, if you have a tavern, just one more thing, if you have a tavern down, downtown and there are fights and rowdiness outside that tavern, what do you do with it? You mm -hmm. shut it down immediately. Mm -hmm. There's never been a problem with the liquor board shutting down. Well, I can down. tell you what, the, just looking at the number of calls of service, I'm sure this is the first time any of us have seen, well, this, is seen this information tonight. Well, this is outrageous. This is any liquor board and violation that they've ever had in here. It's certainly uh, worth closer examination and follow-up. Well, I, I so hope you'll read guarantee that will be happening. And I hope you'll have another open hearing on what you can do with saving downtown Hagerstown or, or the, the urban area of Hagerstown because it's becoming a, it's becoming a ghetto. We're very concerned about, about that and I appreciate you being engaged. I appreciate everybody being engaged. I think it really is a testament Testament we hear a lot, and uh, the fact that 100 people showed up to our community meeting last week, in addition to the council meetings that we've had where we've been uh, talking about how to revitalize not just the downtown, but even taking the steps that we're planning on doing today with hiring more inspectors, uh, uh, increasing the rigor of the inspections program. The city did make progress when we had more inspectors and we had uh, more inspections occurring and we can go from being reactive 
and instead start taking a proactive approach to all of the neighborhoods in town because it's not just about downtown it is about our neighborhood it's about all the neighborhoods in town and so I don't want anyone to think that uh, we're myopic in our view and, and what we're doing here uh, but thank you for your testimony um, up next is mr. Tom Campbell mr. Campbell if you don't mind state your name and address for the record please My name's Tom Campbell, and I live at 900 Nolan Drive, and my concern is the Schuster Company and the uh, rock crushing that they're going to do in the future and the dust that they'll accumulate and, uh, and the noise, because it's, it's not going to be, and I know it's over 100 decimals, and the city only allows 75 so I'm concerned about that and I'm concerned about the whenever they I know there's streams that feeds the park and some of the streams comes this way that feeds the park and the cement and stuff that's on the ground will wash into our water table from that all the dust that they're going to create and I, and I don't know whether the city has any control over that, but at our last meeting, uh, we were told that uh, the city had nothing to do with them. It's really a state of Maryland issue. The Department of Environment yeah, is I understand the, that. the entity holding the hearings and has the, the final say in whether or not that. Yeah, but is you permitted. all have the say on giving out permits, correct? Right, but as long as it complies with the state law, uh, I think the city is, is pretty obligated to follow through in, in letting the uh, property owner conduct their business because it's a permitted use uh, currently under city code. Well, see, I had asked for an air quality station to be set up, and the EPA claims that they don't have the money, but they mm -hmm. got money for everything else. Mm -hmm. And they I do don't think have any money in this area for this area I do think that they were talking about having another public hearing I'm not sure if that is the case well, but I uh, understand they are going to have another meeting but mm -hmm. we haven't been notified as to when or where mm -hmm. well I appreciate you voicing your concern I know it's uh, it's an issue we are hearing from some folks about in that neighborhood and and I think Councilmember Alshire has brought it up a couple times too and, and I think we're monitoring the situation closely to see uh, well they're not watering either like they were supposed to right that's another concern we've heard I think Councilmember yeah. Alshire brought up and uh, see originally we shouldn't have had that problem to start with because if the city would have followed through that overpass would have been moved over and, mm. and that place wouldn't have existed mm -hmm. they, and they knew it was cheaper to buy housing than what it was to move the company and that's a good point. There. That's a good point. Well, thank you for your testimony. Appreciate it. And we'll be we'll be monitoring that that story as it develops. Uh, next on the list is Mr. Christopher Brown. Good evening. Hello, sir. Christopher L. Brown. My business is 642 Oak Hill Avenue. Most of you know as Schindel's Pharmacy here in Hagerstown. I'm actually a legal resident of Pennsylvania. But I feel I'm qualified here to talk about the uh, disgust and ruckus and trash and so on and so forth that Dr. Eric Smith has uh, spoken on concerning sheets at the corner of Potomac and Fairground Avenue. Uh, we've had m many instances in our store, some of them have even moved up the street from sheets. And when we ask sheets to roll back their cameras or whatever, if somebody comes in our store, has a sheets coffee mug, a bag or whatever, you know, they, for some reason, they can't do it. They don't want to be bothered, you know. I guess they turn their other end or whatever. Um, I think uh, Dr. Smith has some more things to say. And if at all possible, I'd like to yield three minutes and 28 seconds to him. Is that possible? Without objection, go ahead. Well, I, it's actually four minutes and 16, 15 seconds. Okay. So. <laughs> I, well, anyway, I want to get back to, to the business of <coughs> trying to control neighborhood blight. And, and as I said to begin with, uh, I think that, that there are ways, you know, I don't know what the, the, the 
percentages is of rental versus homeowners. But you, we're about 60 40 citywide. Well, I think you should make Renters all to effort to reverse that completely. We're, absolutely, that and is one of our I, goals. And, and one of the goals should be to, instead of encouraging people to fix up rental properties and giving them money and subsidies, I think one of the goals is you should encourage people to buy rental properties and turn them into private homes and give them a tax break mm -hmm. or well, some we, subsidy. We do, doctor. Mm -hmm. We those do we have do. those programs. Those programs, those programs exist. exist, and I'm not aware that we subsidize rental properties. Okay, well, limiting those properties, I, I, I think if you put, I don't know whether it's possible legally to put a freeze on rental units. Uh, I think there are other things you can do to rental units. You can go in and see how many people are living there. Are there 10 people living in a one bedroom apartment? And that's where your inspectors and you have to take, you have to take calls, uh, anonymous and, and regular calls from the public to, to assess these things. Uh, I've heard a case where there's 20 people living down near me in, a, in one house, in a two-bedroom small house. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, the <clears throat> I think if you would give people an incentive to fix up places, they would do that and live there and not rent it. Uh, I think that you need to enforce the, the, the property through a strict, lady, uh, strict city code. Uh, landlords should be held responsible for the property code violations and their tenant actions and code violations, just as you would deal with any rowdy business, such as sheets or a bar that's, that's, that, that can't control, can control their customers. Uh, the only way you can control it is hold the landlords responsible. Uh, I would suggest that maybe there be limits on square footages for rentals in one, two, three bedrooms. How many, how many people can live in a, in a three bedroom house? Actually, all that is in our code. It currently. is? Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. It, it should be in Minimum square footages, there's minimum ceiling heights, there's minimum egress, there's all those things. Good. I think there's things that you can do to, to limit the number of, of, of uh, the, the parking is a problem. I think maybe you should just require a minimum of two McAdam off street parking spots for each renewal rental unit. That might be a, people are gonna scream bloody murder when you do this. But if you don't grab the bull by the horns and take it and go with it, it, it it's, gonna, it's just gonna keep, keep snowballing and out of control. I think the empty buildings in downtown Hagerstown, I've heard a lot of people proposed vacancy taxes. I don't know whether you've ever considered that or whether it's legally possible. The problem is we can't target properties for taxation. That is illegal. Well, if, if you, you Specific can- Specific properties. You can find them for vacancies though. <clears throat> the, there are the, certain other ways we can try the, to address that the, problem. The Absolutely. empty buildings I in downtown Hagerstown- Guarantee you we're looking into all those in options. In Hagerstown completely. But you've got to do something. How many years and how many city councils did it take to tear down the light plant and it's still standing? And I'm, lo I'm looking forward to seeing it go. But I don't think it's ever gonna go because I don't think anybody will, instead of paying that guy to tear it down, you should take him to court and make him tear it down. We are, Doctor. Stay tuned. We're filed Great. suit. It's in, it's in litigation. I'm glad All to hear All the it. things you're telling us you want us to do, we've done. Landlords, we've passed legislation that make landlords responsible for the actions of their tenants. We have rental registration laws that went into effect years ago. Um, that we just tightened, actually, we just several tightened months them ago. up. We've just gone to annual, out, but I just want you to know, almost everything that you're suggesting that we do, we have done. We're trying well, to do, and and actually, I was just then commenting you need to, to, to do more number. because it's not working. Well, you're stating our case perfectly for us, and we okay. and we really do need more folks like you to to share your story. Because the last thing I'll do is say is a positive effort is Hagerstown's become a food desert. I don't know whether you're familiar with the term or not. I am. But there's no place you can buy food downtown. Uh, I would I would direct you to our recent plan uh, with the Urban Partners uh, report that encourages the expansion of the hours of the farmer's market and uh, to make that more of a food place for downtown well, residents. Well, I hope you'll condemn some properties down there and ask Food Line to come in rent-free and serve the citizens of Hagerstown. Thank you. My time's up. Thank you, Doctor. All right, the next person on the list is Ronald Conrad. Ronald. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Ronald Conrad, and uh, my wife and I have had the uh, building at 714 Potomac Avenue now for over 45 years. So I was actually, we were there before Sheets came along. And 
the point is, when they started out, it was like a mom-pop convenience store. You know, they, they had uh, small items and two gas pumps. And then the next thing you know, they added the uh, fast food carryout. Okay, so now they have that in addition to the convenience store and the pumps. Then next came two more pumps. So now we have a total of four pumps there. And then after the pumps came, along came the lottery. So now we have the lottery. So my point is they're running a multi-million dollar operation there. From what I understand, they're taking in well over $7,000 a day there. And they're doing all this on a postage stamp. They really only have four parking spots there for employees. Their dumpsters are within 12 inches of my property line. And even as recent as today, I had to go in and ask the manager if she would take action to get rid of the dumpsters with the bad odor. But that's what we're dealing with there. Mm -hmm. It's too big of an operation for that size building lot. My building lot is actually larger than theirs. And all I have is one apartment and a small business and several garages in the rear. Mm -hmm. But yet, they're, they're running this multi-million dollar operation and they're actually taking over the entire neighborhood. Well, the effects are taking over the yes, entire neighborhood. Yes, they are. Sure. I mean, every day I have to go in there and pick up trash. Mm -hmm. I have to deal with that, along with parking in the front and so on. And the other thing I want to complain about, if I may, is the two vacant buildings within the same area. Across from me, you have this so-called liquor store. It was there four years ago. Not last year, a year before, it's been vacant for over four years. They're still displaying uh, beer signs. Mm -hmm. Grass is growing up terribly. Just go by, you'll see it for yourself. So then go down a little further on the right, you have what you the call- The old laundromat. The old laundromat. Mm -hmm. That's been there, I don't even remember any time there was actually uh, uh, laundry machines in there. It's been vacant that long. And these people that own these properties are actually local people in the sense of laundromat. If you look at the tax records, they're people from Hedgesville, which is, as far as I'm concerned, is down the road. The liquor store building, they're from Boyd, Maryland. The, the addresses and the names are right with the tax records. So why can't these people be contacted to take action and do something? I'm, I'm going to put it this way. Coming into Hagerstown, you're going to pass that area, and it's no sooner you're getting into town and you're right there at Potomac Avenue. Well, in my opinion, it looks like a low-end neighborhood. I mean, is this what we want? You're spending all kind of money to try and bring businesses in, so you load them up in a bus and bring them in town, and this is what they see. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, and I would I love to see we need someone to take, take some form of action. I'd love to see some competition for sheets in the neighborhood, quite frankly, and have someone take over the uh, the property and create a little grill or something, a little restaurant yeah. that neighbors would yeah. actually like I mean, to eat. Something more to eat. be done there, I'm sure. Yeah. But this is what we're dealing with. Absolutely. Well, I thank you for your, your comments. Thank you. Mr. Shanguris. Good evening, Mayor, Good Don, evening. Council. Brenda. I'm Randy Changuris, 2815 Roarsville Road. I've lived in Pleasant Valley since 1978. So you wonder why is someone from the southern part of the county at a city council meeting? I'm going to tell you this. A better downtown. I know you spent a lot of money on the Urban Partners Report, but I was elected as state delegate for my colleagues to go to the National Education Association Convention in Denver, Colorado. Now, I've been to a lot of cities. In fact, I was in Denver about 30 years ago. I'm going to tell you, for the price of an airplane ticket, you can go and see what Hagerstown could be. Let me just tell you, I was so excited what I saw in Denver that I know can happen right here. I stayed at the Sheridan downtown, which is at Court Street and uh, 16th Street Mall. What Denver did was take a main thoroughfare, much to the angst of the community and businesses, and made it into a pedestrian mall. It was paved with patio type stone. They ran free shuttles for the entire 20 blocks from one end to the other with an island in the middle. In the middle, they had planters, they had trees. They had upright pianos 
we have a theater district, upright pianos that anybody could go and sit and play. Those are coming to Hagerstown soon, but that's a good idea. But I'm going to tell you, we were really impressed sitting in the outdoor cafes when anybody came in. No one was playing chopsticks. They played real, real, real nice. They had planters. They had trees. They had small geysers coming out of the ground, only about like this, but for aesthetic purposes. They had chess tables. They had benches. They had information signs for the entire downtown area. At one end, just beyond the mall, was the state capitol. You've seen it with the gold dome. A big city park that ran down the center to the city municipal building, bordered by an art museum. At the other end was Wine Coop. Wine Coop Street led directly to Cora Stadium, six blocks. People rode or walked the mall and then walked the six blocks to the stadium. Businesses, I'm a cross country and track coach, former. I do a lot of walking, do a lot of running, and so I can get around. Three blocks on either side of that mall, the businesses thrive. The buildings uh, on either side uh, were renovated, used the same architecture that we have here, kept the exact same names, the Cattleman's Building or, or Wayne's Store or the Union Pacific Railroad, and kept the exact same uh, uh, architecture that they had and renovated, sprinkled with new buildings, new office buildings around. At one end was a convention center, big enough for the NEA. All we need is a small convention center, one that would cater to small groups like the Moose, that gives them day trips to our Civil War sites at Antietam and up in Gettysburg, South Mountain, day trips to D.C. or to Baltimore. We could attract people here at a convention center. Right next to the convention center was their theater district. Not just one theater, multiple theaters for folks to get to. They also had a theme. And it seemed to me, because I enjoy beer, was that they had craft beers that every restaurant seemed to specialize either in making their own or marketing craft beers from around. We're starting a wine industry here in Maryland. We can do the same. All I'm saying is this. It's just a price of a plane ticket. It doesn't cost hundreds of thousands of dollars for someone to get excited about what downtown Hagerstown can look like. Leadership takes vision and it takes initiative. Even if it's on your own dime, you need to see the potential that is Hagerstown. Maybe not Germany, maybe Denver is where you need to go, Mr. Mayor. Actually, I've been all around this great country four times in my little Pontiac vibe and okay. uh, been to Denver a couple times and Portland, Oregon's and other Have great Have you been to Denver recently? City. I have. I've been okay. to that very district you're describing. Then you, then you know the potential that can be Hagerstown. Absolutely. Oh, that's why I think all of us are on this uh, dais up here. I, I've, I share your passion and enthusiasm. Uh, and it was enough passion to bring me up out of the southern part of this county to come up here to make a statement today. All right. Well, and and I, hope I hear these folks up here, and I know what, what can, can happen. Well, I hope that you will continue to support downtown, not only through your uh, excited words, but also, you know, putting your feet on the street and going to our great restaurants and uh, museums and library. I think it's going to take everybody uh, doing that. And, uh, and I, like I said, I appreciate your passion. and enthusiasm. We certainly do. And you saw what Bill Cosby did, right? That's right. Okay. Randy, That's just, right. To, just to yes. let you know, my, my brother, who has lived in the suburbs of Denver for 30-some years, about six years ago, 
moved to downtown inner city Denver in one of those new renovated right. brand new high rise residentials. I was out there in February for a week, visited the very places you're talking about and saw what can be done. Um, we just need to make sure our community gets on board well, with if things. If you can be as excited as I was, and I've been, like I said, all over this country, We're you can get these it. folks there. You can see the snow-capped Rockies there. You can see South Mountain, the Appalachian Trail from here. Well, and, and one of the points I made last Thursday at, at the gathering at the library is that we have to start believing that we're worth this kind of investment. The investment that it's going to take to get to where you're talking about, it takes money, not just public money, but ma the majority of which is going to be private right. investment. It takes courage on your all's part. Well, and that's okay, right. To invest. We all played Absolutely. Monopoly as kids. And you know that buying the property is only part of the way. You got to build the houses and the, and the hotels. That's right. That's right. Okay. So uh, I appreciate your comments. And like I said, stay tuned. Thank you. All right. Randy, it was good to see you. And I, I will recall for the audience that you used to grow some of the most beautiful flowers in all of Washington County. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up is Lynn Queto. Lynn. Hi, my name is Lynn Quito. I oh, live I'm sorry. At, oh, that's okay. 468 North Potomac. Uh, I own some rental properties on either side of my house and right around the corner on Broadway. And I came tonight because of the sheet store. I don't want to go back over everything that everybody has raised. They're all very valid points, but I would like to emphasize the idea of having the sheet store have someone circulate through the neighborhoods picking up trash. Uh, um, I make a pass on my five properties at least once a day picking up trash. I would say 75% of that trash has a, a sheet's emblem on it or is a product like a soda can that is sold at sheets. Uh, when I'm working out in my yard, uh, um, if there's a steady flow of people coming up and down the street, go up empty-handed, come back carrying sheets bags. The city has done a great job putting trash cans out, but the people don't use them. Within uh, one block of my house, there are three trash cans. Uh, on the alley behind my house, there's a trash can on every corner. Some of the worst trash I pick up is in the alley. Uh, people cannot be bothered to mm -hmm. hold on to their trash till they get to the end of the street and put it in the trash can. Uh, so I would just like to encourage the idea of having sheets be responsible for a certain radius from that store. We're two blocks from the store, and we see that kind of trash. Mm -hmm. but that was my main point for tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Joe Z Zaire. Zaire. Hello, everyone. I'm Joe Zaire. I live at 650 Oak Hill Avenue. Um, and um, I'm here to attest to what uh, Dr. Smith said about the Sheets uh, uh, gas station and the problems we have around the property. Um, I bought my property about in late 2003, and I was so proud that I'm in the historic district, and I loved it, loved the neighborhood. Shindle's Pharmacy with Chris Brown, and everyone been there for decades. And I've seen things deteriorate uh, by the day, things getting worse. Uh, people come in 2, 3 o'clock in the morning to sheets and, and um, making noise and throwing trash around, urinating on the sidewalks. And it's really getting disgusting. And I'm, I don't want to just pack and go sell my house because I love the neighborhood at the proximity to the city and downtown. And I'd like to keep it as clean as possible. So I'm here to attest to everyone that said something about the problem over there and to do something about it. And furthermore, I don't know if this uh, gas station being so close to the residential properties, is that still under the state? Is, is, is legal or is still permitted. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a situation, I lived in New Jersey about 20 years ago where a gas station was so close to residential properties that it blew up. 
and there was lawsuits after lawsuits and after lawsuits. And I'm sure there is a, a certain codes or a, mm -hmm. um, that allow certain distance between a gas station and residential area. And I prefer that that gas station be closed down uh, for, for many, many reasons, or the least get their timing, uh, like a certain time of the day that not to be open at mm -hmm. night, where people could come in at certain times of the night and make noise sure. and annoy the neighborhood and, make, and, and just getting worse and worse since I, I lived in the neighborhood. I appreciate the ideas. And also, I just want to say, don't give up hope. Don't sell your house and move because of what you're seeing and what you're experiencing. Uh, I, you know, in my uh, listening just to the testimony here tonight, in my visits to neighborhoods, just like the one I took yesterday over to South Mulberry, uh, on the 100 block of South Mulberry, and listening to the residents there, listening to people at the previous city council meetings, at the public meetings at the library, people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I just want to make sure everybody knows. Yeah. Thank you. This council understands that, and we are doing our best to take every legal action we can possibly take to address these issues that everyone has been bringing up. Uh, so I appreciate you making those Thank comments. You. And we, we've, brought, we've brought our sworn police force to the highest we've had in over 20 years within the last year, if I'm correct. Is that correct, Bruce? And then that's going from a low point to now worth the most police officers <clears throat> we've had. We had 11 cent tax increase. We had 11 cent tax increase because bringing on more police officers, while three inspectors may not be enough, it's still doubling our inspection force. Um, believe me, when you sit up here and raise taxes 11 cents, you better have reasons for it. Those are the reasons. And, and the other thing is just to make sure we all understand, it certainly is not you against us. Um, we all live in the same neighborhoods. I can tell you I have to talk to the chief of police because we've had two very suspicious vehicles in our neighborhood at 3 a.m. in the morning, which is probably only, what, 10 blocks from, from Chris and you all. Um, and we all have the same problems. We're, we're, matter of fact, I will tell you, we all thought that what we were going to have tonight was a big list of the Landlords Association coming in and complaining because we are again enacting legislation tonight that they will be very opposed to as they were opposed to the last piece of legislation we this administration enacted. So we are hearing it very loud, very clearly, and doing what we can. Doc, the Liquor Board is empowered by the state of Maryland to take liquor licenses away from people. Um, they don't necessarily have the right to close a business. They just have the right to take what they sell away and suspend it. We as a municipality do not have the ability just to close down a business like the liquor board does. But I and you have all put forth some ideas that I think we can address here shortly. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, let me. I let, suggest. Hold on. We're, we'll do Mr. Brubaker and then you, Mr. Munson. I suggest that we send copies of the transcript of tonight's testimony, to as well as the exhibits, to Sheets headquarters. And say we want to work on this with you, because mm -hmm. that's the best way to get cooperation, and then go from there. See how sure. they react. If they don't react, that tells us something too. Right. But I mean, copies of the transcript of this good testimony. So they can see that it's not more than a bureaucratic approach. Sure. As well, you know, again, as well as this very telling exhibit. Very good suggestion. Do that as soon as possible. I think it's Central Pennsylvania. Right? Mm-hmm. Clark. Well, I'll, I'll make the point that uh, I live on Magnolia, and I came down at Oak Hill to come to my uh, council office at, uh, in Elizabeth Heger Center today, and there was trash all over Oak Hill this morning when I came down. I suspect much of it came from sheets. It's not very good corporate advertising when, uh, if, if you want to have your, your brand out there as a piece of trash in somebody's neighborhood, that certainly isn't good advertising. And I do think Mr. Brubaker brings up a good point about sharing this testimony and, and the, uh, certainly the crime analysis that has been provided by the chief and, uh, and all the other written testimonies. So we will be following up, rest assured, and 
uh, like well, and, and the transcript, the clerk Absolutely. transcript of the sure. hearing. Yeah. That's yeah, duly noted. The um, send a video. You need to send a DVD. We can send the link well, to YouTube. Both. There we go. High both. tech. Both. In any mean as possible. In my experience, the attorneys like it written, so, yeah. Well, it doesn't matter. They need to see it up front. And Both. since we, I thought we weren't supposed to do any of these comments until it was Well, we've time. already moved into uh, well, we've already council comments. Okay, so don't anybody leave. Go ahead, because Penny. Because I need to address, okay? First off, sheets, all right? <laughs> Given the phone call about what was going on, I know what's going on, three blocks away from, I told them, two of them said, what will, what will work? come to City Hall, you need to come to City Hall. They need to hear what is going on. Now, we have to follow up, okay? And the bottom line is, is once you still continue to see what you're seeing, continue to call the police. Every call matters, okay? We are just now, I think, uh, I was told by staff that uh, the first round of fines have been sent out for these chronic nuisance properties. Uh, I've heard from the residents in the neighborhood that I visited yesterday that eviction notices are being sent out in some cases and that can only be done if people continue to make the phone call if well Kelly uh, in your again, in your spot it it's it's rough because you're right beside it when it comes to sheets we're all around sheets, so they really don't know where it's well, coming from. And there's from. one thing when you're talking about, again, a neighbor dispute versus a corporate entity that is affecting an entire neighborhood. But once again, I just want to point out you're in a public meeting talking about your personal neighborhood neighbor dispute. So, uh, I mean, uh, anyway, anyway, I, we hear we hear what you're saying. We hear what you're saying. We know, We understand what the issues are. We still need people to make those phone calls. Hiring three more inspectors will allow us to be more proactive and to go out into neighborhoods and address issues where inspectors see issues to enforce the code. But we need people to report whether it's code or whether it's crime. We need people to drop the dime, to make a, a bad rhyme and a, an outdated metaphor. Okay. Uh, Sorry, uh, citizen comment time is over. This is not a, a back and forth discussion. I'm, I'm sorry I have to cut that off, but we do need to move on in the agenda. I'm going to ask the city administrator if he has. Uh, 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 I didn't finish. Well, we are going to continue with mayor and council. Comments. Okay. I just want to move forward. Don't anybody with the leave. I'll, I'll hold off. No comments from me. Okay, mayor and council comments. Ms. Nye, would you like to continue? Okay, Schuster. Cement, concrete rather. I call it cement. I've been, you know, corrected on how many times. Let me just tell you where that stands. Since we, in fact, did do the form letter that went down to MDE, the representative did get that. Um, she gave me a phone call on Friday telling me that she got the 50 signed letters and that um, there still wasn't evidently somebody asking for, and I'm not sure about this because nobody at the city knows this, um, in holding it back. So I have no idea, okay, what that was about. All I can tell you is, is that on the 21st was our deadline, and now I'm still waiting to hear. From what I am gathering is that, I don't know there will be another hearing, I would only hope there would be, but they don't have to grant us anything. I am very concerned in the fact that I don't know that we're going to be able to do anything with dust. If nothing else, possibly noise, because there is a noise ordinance. So I can only hope that. I know that we have to now stay on MDE. I know that, yes, in fact, the senator did send a letter. The senator wanted to know what the findings were. I think that is not the way to go, but then I'm not the senator. I would have liked to have known what, in fact, we could have done to get this at an avenue that we could at least tolerate what was happening out here. I did mention about the water bath, and the woman really got very short with me. And um, she also, because I had asked at the public hearing, could you please show me another community that has got one of the stone crushers in a residential area. 
it took from that public hearing until last Friday for her to say, oh, yeah, well, there is, and I was going to send you the email, and it's in Andal Ronda County. Well, I haven't seen the email yet, and I don't know the location, so I don't know what we're dealing with, but I will tell you that we did have 50 letters that did get sent to MDE, and now we're just waiting for the findings. But I've not stopped fighting, and it was um, yeah, Councilman Munson and myself that was at the public hearing. Um, Kristen could not be there, but I have called him just to please follow up. In my talk with Kristen, he said that once the permit was given, basically it was out of our hands because the city of Hagerstown did zone this heavy industrial. So I still have a problem with it. I still think it's an environmental problem, but again, I don't know where we can go, but we'll try whatever avenue we have to. Also, Dr. Smith, when you said about going into um, the places that do have apartments, I wish we could. And John, correct me if I'm wrong, but it has to be either a police call that we can actually witness as to how many may be in that apartment or it could be somebody perhaps in the apartment building asking for code to come in that we may get a sneak peek because other than that, we have not the right to go in. Am I correct on that? And Dr. Smith, I'm very frustrated because believe me, where I live, I see it, okay? And I have to prove it. So it's a matter of you better have your camera and you better see how many people's going into that building and how many people's coming out of that building because that's where it stands and that's what makes it difficult and I get very angry about it being that difficult, okay? Keely, I'm sorry that you had to go in after public information. Unfortunately, I had to do the same thing, and I forget what it was that I requested, but yeah, I had to pay it too, all right? And that's, you know, but I'll talk to you afterwards because I'll see what we can do, okay? Um, oh Lord. Just wait a minute. I just wanted to make sure that I had everybody. Take your time. The vacant buildings, I think the vacant buildings was among those that were also going to be addressed in the future, was it not? Because I know that John had brought that up as well as properties owned by banks. That was another thing because we are also impacted with that as far as code violations and a lot of breaking and enterings that are happening too. But I hope that I have addressed. I. We are not supposed to speak out of turn. The citizens are supposed to speak first. So it was hard because I was, when Lou and Dawn and Marty, and I thought, no, I can't do that. So that's why I waited. But I hope that I have addressed what I needed to address in the people that have called me. Okay? Thank you. I appreciate that. And we do try to keep decorum here at our regular sessions. and. Uh, especially um, because we don't want this sort of a back and forth conversation during a regular session. I would certainly encourage people to reach out to us individually, whether it's by phone, email, after the meetings, personally, one-on-one, -on -one, anytime. Um, Mr. Brubaker. Uh, yes. Um, during my, uh, I'll, I'll speak to uh, Denver first. Uh, I was stationed there in the Army for six months. That was a long time ago and had the pleasure of going back a few years ago. Did so airplanes I too, even exist back then? Pardon? Did they even have airplanes? Well, yeah, back then? <laughs> something like that. But um, uh, at, uh, Boulder's another good example, just about 30 miles north of Denver. They have an excellent mall in the middle of their town. They have a, a lot of advantages. They have a lot of advanced legislation too, which is you know, hard to accomplish in, uh, in, in communities. Um, 
And I also saw some really bad examples out west. I saw Flagstaff, Arizona was a good example, but there's a few towns that I shall not name that were where anything goes that were uh, not the way to do it. So you can really see all kinds of examples. That leaves me, I, my wife and I were fortunate to be able to go uh, to, uh, to Europe this uh, past uh, few weeks and um, I had a, a fabulous visit to our sister city. Um, again, it was a private visit on our funds, and, but I did get a chance to go through their city facilities and uh, their sister city group, um, which uh, uh, visited here a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, we had a great uh, time out on the Rhine, um, and uh, I think I met all but two of the ones that were here a year and a half ago. Uh, we stayed with folks that stayed with us when they were here a year and a half ago. And it, it's a great way to get ideas, a great thing to, for international uh, comedy. It, it's just a really pleasant experience and the people couldn't have been great. And speaking of cities and communities, you know, it's a very different environment over there. It's, it's uh, a lot of, uh, public transportation, uh, more bicycles than you could ever believe. And, um, uh, but th they're catching up to us and everything. I even think the, uh, the public road infrastructure is getting ahead of ours because we're not maintaining ours. We're not willing to, uh, to pay for it. So, um, you know, it was a very great experience. And uh, I'll thank our friends from Vasil if they're watching in. Maybe on YouTube. Yeah. And the mayor is going, so he's the, he will make the big splash when he goes. Yeah, I'm excited. <clears throat> Mr. Metzner. Well, all I can say is there's a very simple way to have the amount of bicycles going in this nation and the amount of public transportation. We just need to make gas eight dollars an hour, like it, eight dollars a gallon, like it is in Europe, and uh, suddenly you'll see people on bicycles. I did that too. Uh, I I would um suggest that we take a look at um we passed seems to me we've passed nuisance ordinances with regards in the past to residential burglar alarms that are overused we have now passed legislation with regards to overuse of city services with regards to rental properties under the correct theory that we can put these restrictions on rental properties versus home ownership because a rental property is a business. Having gone there, we're not yet, Dr. Smith, to having enacted the law that would apply to businesses, if I am correct. And I think this is a good example of where some proactive legislation may be able to help, but only to help. Because ultimately, I don't know that we ever would have the legal authority to shut down the sheets. And the amount that you can fine um, people that are making the kind of money that's being indicated they're making is, is one way to try to put it down. I would also suggest, um, and I see, I don't know how it happened, but the 7-Eleven out in the Longmeadow Shopping Center finally got smart and took away their gas uh, their gas pumps and for those of us who visit 7-eleven it was a real pleasure not to have the parking and the issues I, I don't think anybody would ever approve the sheet store in today's world and obviously some may not have even been born here when the sheets was approved um, the other thing that I would really suggest and, and I say this in all sincerity we went through an issue in this city, and, and you all are acutely aware of it because of where you live. You remember the railroad crossings. And I don't know if you have any idea how long we fought with the railroads to get those crossings repaired. Uh, people complained to us all the time, and we have very little power over that. We found a solution. It was thinking outside the box, and you may remember what it was. We posted signs at those railroad crossings indicating the phone number and address of the particular railroad that was responsible and suggested to our citizens that they write the letters and make the phone calls. That 
particular railroad system has a national publication. Hagerstown made their national publication, and our railroad crossings got repaired. And it got done not through legislation, not through cities flexing muscles, but by citizens making clear to a corporate entity what issues needed to be fixed. I can't tell you how Sheets will respond. I don't know. But I would certainly hope that our staff will get the appropriate address and name for all of you to be able to make your concern directly to them, as we will also. Uh, we found uh, at Vasil Boulevard with Lowe's. For years, uh, you would look out there and find their landscaping was just horrible. We worked with Lowe's for years to find out they had made a, a really good effort and the, and the land was a problem. If you got there now, you'll find their landscaping or it's pretty good now. And we're not talking about the retail store, but earlier on. So I would hope that that would help. We will do, you can rest assured, we will do everything we can from this end uh, to try to help this problem. Chris and I went to high school together. We know each other as, as long as most people know. And we all live in this area. We all see the same thing. We are not sitting up here and uh, some living in some areas where you all don't. We live in the same places, the same locations, have the same problems, see the same things, and are trying to fix them. Uh, they're not easy fixes. My neighbor's house is owned by a bank, and it's empty, and try to tell the bank that they have to do something about it when the deed isn't even in their name yet. We all have this. We're working on it. We truly are. And, and as I said earlier, a whole lot of the things you suggested we do, we are doing and have done, um, including I think we have $10,000 for down payments for, for purchases. We do everything in our power to keep properties from going to rentals, everything. We've identified long ago it wasn't this administration, but the problems are clear. The answers are not as easy as, as one would hope, but believe me, we're working on them. And thank you. Councilmember uh, Munson. Uh, Dr. Smith, thank you for coming here tonight and outlining your concerns. You had previously contacted me, and I referred, referred the chief of police to you, and uh, I think I saw an some of your correspondence where the chief contacted you. Uh, but um, the statistics that you gave us shows that the problem, in spite of that, continues to get worse and worse. And I, I uh, sympathize with everything you say. And uh, I just want to say there is no one on this council that's prepared to allow Hagerstown to become one big ghetto. We're going to do our very best to make a difference. And there will be additional forthcoming, forthcoming legislation in the future that's uh, going to address those issues. So thank you for being here tonight and raising this and bringing uh, the people along that you've brought to support it. Thank you. I you know, just want to, again, thank everybody for coming. I, like Councilmember Metzner, thought that we would have a room full of landlords here tonight to protest our, yet again, another action that they perceive as against them. But I think I mentioned it in last week's meeting when we introduced this ordinance uh, that staff so eloquently put in the memo that, you know, a lot of people use the word code as a pejorative. And in our community, we look at it as our community standards. And, you know, from what I, my experience on the Planning Commission for five and a half years was if it's a developer or whoever, they're only going to jump as high as we make them jump. And if we set the bar down here, that's the product we'll get. Uh, so I, you know, concur with the uh, statements that have been made about doing whatever we can, that we hear you. And again, I think it is important to hear these uh, issues from residents or, or property owners in the neighborhoods uh, to really know uh, that we're doing the right work, that we're on the right track. Um, I do want to thank again all the folks who have contributed. I have here the program for the municipal band. It's their 100th uh, 
anniversary season. Uh, the clerk pointed out that my grandfather is listed in there as a former band member, and I uh, had uh, forgotten that he was a drummer in a big band, and I guess he was in the municipal band as well. So I'm happy to be taking a copy of the, uh, the recording of the concert that they uh, had, uh, I guess it was two, week, two weekends ago now, and uh, sharing that with the folks of Vasil, uh, along with a lot of other gifts that, uh, you know, I don't want to name one because I'll forget uh, everybody else, but uh, some books to contribute to their library of uh, local history and uh, from the Museum of Fine Arts, the Hagerstown Community College, um, as well as a lot of other Hagerstown stuff. So I'm looking forward to that trip representing the city of Hagerstown, carrying on the tradition, uh, this very long lasting sister city relationship. Uh, couldn't be more honored and privileged to, to represent Hagerstown. I want to thank staff for another. Uh, great organization event in downtown Hagerstown, bike night. I think it was a great success. Uh, turned out to be good weather and uh, a good time. Um, I do want to update folks just on some meetings that I've been having. Uh, Councilmember Metzner brought up the railroad. It's a very good point about how we get uh, those corporate entities to take action and we have to be creative sometimes uh, to do that. I'm a big fan of naming and shaming. I think that works. Uh, but. I did meet recently with the newly appointed resident vice president of CSX for the state of Maryland. His name is Brian Hammock. Uh, we met last Friday in the mayor's office uh, with city staff to uh, uh, go over a laundry list of things that we have uh, going on with, with that particular railroad, um, not the least of which is the human occupancy of their property behind City Park where in the first couple months of this administration, two people died. And I refuse to let that kind of use continue to have that kind of outcome. So we are working towards that end of cleaning up that property, getting CSX to take more responsibility for it. We have a follow-up visit planned for August 12th. We're going to be taking a field trip to this particular location. Uh, and we're glad that CSX has gotten their whole team to agree to come uh, to Hagerstown to first visit, uh, meet here at City Hall and then to take a field trip to some of these places uh, that we're looking for their assistance in being a better corporate citizen in Hagerstown. Uh, along those lines, speaking of partners, uh, today I met with uh, Juliana Abowitz, Robin Summerfield, and John, uh, John Delaney, our Congressman's representative, Sonny Holding. Uh, those are the reps for uh, Congressman Delaney, Senator Mikulski, and Senator Cardin. Uh, it was a very fruitful visit. Uh, we're going to plan on meeting quarterly to keep them updated on what's going on in Hagerstown. I'm sure everybody knows there are no such thing as earmarks in Washington, D.C. anymore. Uh, but we certainly want to keep our federal partners engaged, and we want to know about any competitive grant program available to the city of Hagerstown. Uh, this building that we're sitting in was built with federal money. Uh, the stadium that we have uh, it was built with federal money. Uh, you know, again, it's one of those questions of whether or not we're worth the investment, and I believe we are. Uh, so there are some exciting projects that they believe, uh, you know, there are some funds available for. We're going to keep working with them on that. We shared the plans uh, that are coming out of the Urban Partners effort uh, and gave them other updates uh, and feedback from various departments of the city government. So I look forward to continuing on that, uh, that regular meeting with them. Uh, and also, we, uh, Council Member Brubaker and I today met with a representative from an organization called Sustainable Maryland. Uh, you know, the, the notion of sustainability is a pretty nebulous one, uh, although we use it quite a lot in terms of the sustainable community plan, uh, you know, sustainable growth, economics. Uh, so what this does is it helps focus the city's efforts. Uh, you, I'm announcing to my colleagues here can expect a resolution to come before you uh, to uh, lead us down the road of becoming certified as a sustainable community in Maryland, uh, looking at things like creating a green team, which the city has previously created and uh, will we'll be looking to revive, uh, in addition to efforts going on with Main Street uh, that also requires a green committee. So we're not going to duplicate anything, but a lot of these things we're already doing. Uh, but it's a way of packaging uh, the activities that we're doing. Community-based food, I know the doctor mentioned the food desert. 
Uh, so it addresses community gardening, transplant sales, local food fairs. Obviously, we're looking forward to expanding farmer's market activities, energy, health and wellness, buying local, uh, you know, our natural resources, stormwater, uh, water conservation, and even things like pet waste. Uh, so, you know, these are, again, a lot of these things we're doing already, uh, but it's a way to help focus our efforts and actually uh, be a model for other communities in the state of Maryland uh, uh, and around the country. So that's just an update on some things from my end. Uh, does anyone else have any other comments they'd like to add? All right, hearing none, then we'll move into uh, the minutes. Uh, there are two uh, minutes, uh, meetings of two minutes, uh, minutes of two meetings to approve from May 6th and May 19th. Mayor, hereby move for approval minutes as presented for the Mayor and Council meetings held on May 6th and May 19th, um, 2014. Second. Motion made by Mr. Mensner and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Motion carries and the minutes are approved. On to the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that all the consent agenda be approved as presented. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson, seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? <coughs> all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. All right. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the consent agenda is approved. Next up is the unfinished business, the approval of an ordinance to authorize a two month extension to the Antietam Cable Television Franchise Agreement with Antietam Cable Television Inc. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move that the attached ordinance be approved to authorize a two month extension of the Cable Television Franchise Agreement with Antietam Cable Television Inc. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Mensner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The ordinance is approved. Next up is new business. Introduction of an ordinance for Catalyst Project Number 8, amending Chapter 197 rental facilities to provide necessary support to our neighborhoods. Mayor, I hereby move for the Mayor and City Council to introduce an ordinance to amend the code of the City of Hagerstown, Chapter 197, there of rental facilities. <clears throat> These amendments will require that exterior inspections will be conducted annually and the annual per unit license fee be increased to $75. Catalyst Project Number 8 from the Community City Center Plan calls for action to provide the necessary neighborhood support to regulate residential rental properties. These amendments are consistent with the city's vision and commitment for housing and neighborhoods and the community's city center plan. Second. Motion made by Mr. Metzner and seconded by Ms. Nye. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the ordinance is introduced. Next up is the approval of a resolution amending the softball long-term user agreement. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the approval of a resolution to accept an amendment to the softball user agreement at Fairgrounds Park to allow the softball groups to hold two all-night softball events <coughs> during a calendar year. The current user agreement requires all events be completed by 10 p.m. Second. Motion made by Mr. Munson and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and the resolution is approved. Next up is a resolution to authorize the execution of a memorandum of understanding for special deputies. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move the passage of the attached resolution to authorize the mayor to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Washington County Sheriff's Office to permit City of Hagerstown police officers to function as special deputies outside of the jurisdictional limits of the city under the authority of the Sheriff of Washington County. Second. Motion made by Mr. Mensner and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. <clears throat> Ayes have it. The resolution is approved. Next up is a uh, city approval of 
I'm sorry, approval of city funding support for the Maryland Theater seating campaign. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for mayor and council <clears throat> approval of up to $100,000 in city funding support for the Maryland Theater seating campaign. This funding will be provided as a one-for-one -one match to the theater's private fundraising to purchase replacement seating throughout the theater. The source of the city's funding will be the Capital Improvement Program Fund Balance. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? Yes, uh, you know, this is uh, a small step in carrying out the downtown improvement plan. It's not dramatic, but the Maryland Theater has presented us with a long-term capital improvements program, and I think it will even go beyond that, but for improvements to the current facility, it's a practical plan. Uh, they did not get uh, the, the state funds that they expected to, uh, we're trying to buttress them, and uh, we hope that there will be a response from the community to match this money that we're putting up. And uh, it's critical, but it's thought out, and it's part of a multi-stage improvement program for the theater. Any other discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the uh, Maryland Theater is the keystone to saving and continuing development of downtown Hagerstown. And to the extent that we can modestly be helpful, which this resolution does, uh, this motion does, uh, we are moving in an appropriate uh, direction. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion presented by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Munson, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. The motion carries and the resolution <coughs> is approved or the city funding is approved. The uh, Next item is the approval of a general fund reimbursement to the CDBG program. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for the mayor and council to authorize a repayment to the Hagerstown CDBG program in the amount of $164,213. The source of funds for the repayment will be from general fund balance reserves. This repayment is required by U.S. Department of Housing and Urban <coughs> Development for IDIS project number 507. FY05 Hagerstown Neighborhood Development Partnership acquisition of 2850 East Baltimore Street. After repayment, the $164,213 will be made available to Hagerstown's FY15 CDBG Home Ownership Program. Second. Motion made by Mr. Brubaker and seconded by Mr. Munson. Any discussion? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor. I just want to commend staff and uh, for making sure that this money really stays in our budget. It goes from a general fund to the CDBG fund, uh, and it, so it will stay in Hagerstown to be used in Hagerstown, and I knew, know that took some bureaucratic maneuvering to do. I would also note that this frees up the properties on Baltimore Street, otherwise known as the Massey property, uh, to be more easily demolished if that is in fact what some end user desires to do. It takes away the bureaucratic layer of the National Historic Trust out of the equation through this repayment. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a good piece of work. Our staff does deserve a lot of congratul congratulations. And uh, your comments are right on target. This presents the possibility of this eyesore known as the Massey property being demolished and uh, something uh, considerably better uh, going in its place. We hope it will certainly speed up that process. Anyway. Hopefully so. Okay, any other discussion? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion made by Mr. Brubaker, seconded by Mr. Munson, please say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Motion carries. Last but not least, the approval of Catalyst Project Number 8, authorizing three new full-time positions to support our neighborhoods through the rental licensing program. Mr. Mayor, I hereby move for Mayor and City Council to approve the addition of three full-time code compliance inspec inspector positions. These positions are necessary to support our neighborhoods through the rental licensing program. These positions will be funded by an increase in the annual rental licensing fee. The addition of these, po these positions returns staffing to 2003. 
This action is consistent with the city's vision and commitment to housing and neighborhoods and the community center city plan. Second. Motion made by Ms. Nye and seconded by Mr. Metzner. Any discussion? I do. I'm the one that fought long and hard to get this in place to begin with back in 2003. And I knew it was a struggle, wasn't it, Lou? A big time struggle. And we had landlords that were all around. And believe me, they were going to take us to court. But we got it. Unfortunately, what then fell behind us was when the past council that had come in and there was shortage of money and three code enforcement officers went away. And that's why we're looking at a lot of what we're looking at now. The decline is what we have. <clears throat> Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion made by Ms. Nye and seconded by Mr. Menser, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and uh, with that, we will be adjourned. Thank you, everybody.